Hi everybody, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. That goes for you and also to me. I think I've used this intro once before the last time I abandoned this YouTube channel, but it's been a longer stretch. My name is Allie K. Campbell where the K stands for can we not, can we not do this anymore, the whole little intro thing. The last video I did that blew up on YouTube that did really well, that a lot of people commented and were like, this is super helpful, had a lot to do with giving tips about things not to do when you're dating somebody with ADHD, was more geared towards non-ADHD people who are dating someone with ADHD. If anybody really needs the help with this stuff, it's people with ADHD. In my experience, dating as somebody with ADHD can feel pretty impossible. It can be really, really, really challenging. Be out here like navigating love and relationships and dating and being single and what have you. Today we're gonna to be diving into the things that make dating so impossible or feel so impossible as somebody with ADHD. In itself, kind of like navigating in maze with a blindfold on. Then I'm gonna go through the ways that we can mitigate or solve for those particular challenges, okay? Let's get into it. I would say probably biggest challenge, the thing that makes dating as somebody with ADHD like especially impossible, at least for me, is a waning interest in dating and in my dating prospects. A waxing and waning. This is getting very lunar. I pretty much swing between like two extremes. Very into the idea of dating and I'm getting on the apps and I'm maybe using them as a source of like cheap dopamine hits, swiping, 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 or I am like completely disgusted by the idea and just don't want anything to do with it and I will impulsively delete all of my apps. Hyper-focused versus complete disinterest in the entire dating game in general. And I think that like, this is one of the most confusing parts about being somebody with ADHD who's like out in the dating game because it makes it hard to actually know what you want. That comes with a slew of other issues that can be like, easily directed at anybody else who comes in your way. An example might be, you know, meeting somebody new, a lot of interest at the start. It's new and exciting and it is a source of dopamine, kind of like when you find that new favorite song that's just like an earworm for you and you can't stop listening to it over and over again, right? At least this is me. You can't speak for everybody with ADHD, but this is what I've kind of experienced. And a lot of my friends who have ADHD have um, echoed similar sentiments. Although most of them are in relationships now. It's just me by myself feeling of being like captivated by somebody and like really interested in wanting to spend all your time with them, dates, keeping in touch with them, feeling intensely connected. But then all of a sudden, all of that seems like very overwhelming. Just as quickly as you went into it with this like intensity, you're kind of like bowing out. But the issue with this, when you're somebody with ADHD and you're in the dating scene, you're affecting another person. And that's not good. That's not, that's not good. And sometimes like feelings genuinely fade, but most of the time it hasn't even been enough time for feelings to actually develop. And it's just kind of like, like impulsivity and good feelings and acting on those things. But for the other person, unless they have ADHD as well and they're like super aware, but even then it can still be painful. Um, they might take it as a lack of interest or being used or being love bombed. If you're going from talking all day or planning dates or being super consistent with them and then all of a sudden just backing off. It can lead to a lot of misunderstandings and a lot of insecurity, like not only for you because you're like, what the f I thought I just liked this person two days ago, but obviously for the person on the receiving end of it. So so I think that this can happen a lot with a specific person or people that you're dating, but I also think it can happen on a larger scale with your relationship to dating in general. Being super into it, being super committed to the idea of it, and then pulling back and not wanting to have anything to do with it because it's too overwhelming. So my suggestion for this, my solution for this is to not go all in. Maybe pick one of the least overwhelming ways that you can get into dating apps are most comfortable for you, do that. Only do one, set like a limit on how many interactions you're gonna have. And I know that this is easier said than done because like whatever, sparks fly, sparks fly, I get it. But it would be the best for you to set yourself up for an environment that is less likely to create overwhelm and fear. Outside of that kind of solution for the dating game in general, it's also wise, I would say, you should probably disclose not necessarily your ADHD if you don't feel comfortable doing that, but disclose that that is a pattern that you have from the start. And yeah, this might take certain people out of your dating pool because they might see this or hear this and be like, not for me, so that is well within their right. That could be the difference between somebody you really like or want to 
continue to see and connect with to find out if you like keeping them around longer term or them seeing you as a flake and just being like, you're toxic, I'm done. Being super clear about that once that you recognize that you have that pattern to other people is just like a very respectful way to go about dating as somebody with ADHD, I personally think. I mean, I've dated people who have ADHD and I've fallen victim to being the other person of being like, what the f like why why are they why are they doing this to me and i'm very self-aware of this is a thing and i still struggle with it so can you imagine what it's like for somebody who doesn't have as much of a knowledge of it do you think that i would have taken those behaviors in more stride less personally had this person or actually several people any of these people and i had a conversation at the beginning about this is how i communicate it's not the sexiest conversation i will give you that but it could save you a lot of heartbreak so one is out of the way let's get to number two number two so number two is maybe needless to say but it's also not and it's seeking understanding partners and recognizing red flags like yeah everybody has to do this but people who are out there dating and have adhd need to do it in a very particular way this is a challenge that many people with adhd face in the dating world finding partners who truly understand us is tough but what can sometimes be tougher is swiftly dealing with partners who don't, or potential partners who don't, who have made it very obvious from the beginning, it is not gonna work. You know what I'm saying? I think that there needs to be like almost a level of strategy when it comes to seeking connection and clarity. We already lack so, so much of that in so many different ways, just growing up as somebody with ADHD or being the person who exists in the world with ADHD. It's super important when it comes to dating that we're aware of the people that we're letting in because there is a lot of importance to like understanding and compassion. The significance of finding a partner who truly truly gets it can't be overstated it's imperative to find somebody who even if they don't think like you even if it's two people with adhd it doesn't matter adhd manifests in different ways for everybody it still requires a level of like compassion and understanding to how your particular brain works people who will understand that forgetting dates or not being as communicative as they once were um is not the same thing as not caring or you know distraction in a moment Moment doesn't necessarily mean disinterest. People who are gonna be open to hear you out about your behaviors rather than vilifying you as soon as they see them. Finding people like this is, is tough for anybody, but if you can learn how to see who's gonna kind of offer that from the start and who isn't, that's really important because it can kind of like build a foundation of like patience and empathy. And whether or not this becomes like a long-term relationship or not, that's a very safe place to start. Just like essential ingredients for a healthy relationship relationship with anybody. The whole red flag thing, I wish I could have taken my own advice so many times. And I'm sure a lot of people who have dated me wish they could have taken this advice. We all have red flags. ADHD comes with a particular set of them, which we kind of got into in number one. There are also people out there who are particularly red flaggy for us as people who are dating and have ADHD. Whatever those, those red flags are for you, the point is, the hard part can be, at least for me, is like dealing with them swiftly spotting the red flag and not saying ooh it's a circus and then running towards it especially because that kind of like toxic energy can create interest in our brain that intensity right so once you see a sign once you see something say something and the thing you should say is you cut it's over don't let the door hit you in the ass on the way out and i think probably one of the biggest ones is if you try to explain to somebody say 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 you did something and it upset them and you try to explain to them not as an excuse not as an excuse uh, as an explanation of hey my adhd created a lot of overwhelm for me today and that's blah 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 blah, blah and they dismiss it that's a huge red flag give them one shot tell them that's how this makes me feel blah 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 blah, blah. but then if the pattern continues cut your losses please cut your losses don't get roped into a dopamine cycle with somebody who's gonna make you feel like shit just don't do it like i've stayed in so many relationships where i was just constantly being misunderstood and it breaks down your sense of self it breaks down your security it does a number on your self-esteem as fun as those red flags might look in the beginning or as harmless as it may seem just be like oh whatever i'll just keep talking to this person don't 
don't, my solution to this, and there really is no solution to this because I'm gonna be so for real with you guys right now. If a beautiful single lesbian woman came into my life and she had a bunch of red flags, but she was giving me attention and I was physically attracted to her, I would probably keep going with it. I would probably ignore the red flags at least for a little while. I'm getting a lot better with it, but like do as I say, not as I do. I told you not much has changed. Having constant ups and downs, like these kinds of relationships with basically what we can call like the wrong people, that can kind of create the same burnout that I was talking about for dating in general. When you're wired to believe that it's always gonna be like that, it, it does get overwhelming. It does get nerve wracking when somebody new comes in the picture and all of a sudden things start to feel real. Maybe this is a video about my own disorganized attachment style. I don't fucking know. Yes and, I guess. It's, maybe that's what I'll title the video. There is a pretty good solution for this. Did help me for a very long time until I stopped using it. I don't know why I did that because I'm a glutton for punishment perhaps. Do make a list of non-negotiables. And I know a lot of you ADHDers are like me and you love a list. You love to make a list. It's necessarily like doing the things on the list or following them, but making the list is rather fun. Use some colorful pens. Make a list of your non-negotiables. I'm talking like three to five. Three to five things that you definitely, definitely need in a partner. And then three to five things you will not put up with, won't do it. If and when somebody comes into your periphery and you're somebody with ADHD who's in the dating world and you say, ooh, they have two out of the three things that I want in a partner, that's pretty good odds. But they have five out of five of the red flags, you're done. Cut them, quick. Don't be afraid to set high standards just because you're somebody with ADHD and you've probably been made to feel like you're less than your entire life. I like you, I'll date you, maybe. Third and final big challenge is navigating over while dating with ADHD. And this is an issue across the board for everyone. It is quite literally an epidemic, at least in America. So everyone can relate to it, right? But it hits different for people with ADHD. Navigating that loneliness, especially when you're in the dating scene, can be super discouraging. And I feel like it's important to point out that loneliness isn't just like being alone. It's about feeling disconnected. And for those of us with ADHD, this can be amplified just because it's very likely that we have on most of our lives feeling rejected by others or disconnected from other people to some extent. And if we get into like the rejection sensitivity aspect of it, personally, I, I don't deal with rejection sensitivity as much as um, the average ADHD -er does. And the people that I've um, spoken with online and even in real life that have ADHD seem to struggle with it a little bit more than I do. I don't think that's the flex that, that sounds like it is because I actually think the reason I've shielded myself from that is from largely keeping people at a distance, shielding myself from being able to feel rejection, having any kind of sensitivity towards rejection, and then entering the world of dating, which rejection is literally inevitable. I don't care how hot you are, I don't care how successful you are, I don't care how funny you are, you can be rejected because not everybody is for everybody. Somebody might not be into you, and sometimes they're not rejecting you, and you feel like they're f***ing rejecting you. Sometimes it has nothing to f***ing do with you. They make you feel like shit. A simple canceled date for people with ADHD could feel like a profound heartbreak. Maybe I am a little bit more susceptible to it than I think because now I'm looking back on how I've handled being left on red in the beginning stages of dating somebody and psychotic. I was psychotic. My friends will corroborate, corroborate, corroborate. They will agree and prove it. They have the and receipts, man. Still a seltzer girly, by the way. Despite that weird, not sober anymore video I put out a couple of months back. So let's talk about that one. Just kidding. I'm gonna link it right there. Okay. Yeah, it can feel like heartbreaking. I know for me, I guess, and perhaps other people with ADHD when they're kind of dating and even when they're like already in romantic relationships with people, it can lead us to like settle and cling to relationships that are not good for us, objectively speaking. It is very human to want to have a connection. And of course, ADHD people are going to be susceptible to sticking around longer than maybe they should with somebody or in something because the thought of being alone or being lonely, we might avoid ever being alone. We might just cling to whoever falls into our lap to avoid the awful feeling of being alone and the loneliness that comes with it. Pendulum swings. You can 
either be super hyper focused on dating so that you're not even like aware of that like loneliness factor or just avoiding it altogether or you can just be super isolated which is kind of the phase I'm in right now because now just meeting somebody feels too scary it just started like raining like pitter patter on my window as I say this it's like a sign or something dating can feel like a task and an obligation having a partner can feel like a task and an obligation generally speaking ADHD brains don't like tasks and obligations it freaks us out it puts our nervous system into a tailspin um, or at least mine it can lead us to shut down if we're feeling overwhelmed by the experiences we're having dating right on top of all the demands that just come with life especially living in capitalist society our, our natural response will understandably be to shut down and even like isolate ourselves causing more loneliness which is again something we need to be really mindful of because it's also kind of like a fast track to anxiety and depression and substance use misuse abuse a trifecta to kind of cope with it. What has worked for me in dealing with the, the kind of like general dismay and loneliness that comes with being single, dating, and feeling kind of disappointed by it, um, feeling overwhelmed by it, and then retreating and yada yada is just like super leaning on the non-romantic relationships in my life. My friends have been like a saving grace for me over the past couple of years. My family, just being able to be supported by them, spend time with them. Granted, I probably don't spend enough time with either of these groups of people because I do still isolate a lot, but just knowing that they're there, I'm so grateful for that. If you don't have that, I don't even know what to say to that. I, I hope, I hope that you have at least one or two people in your life that you can go to to lean on outside of a romantic relationship who can give you at least a little bit of feeling of, of connection when you're feeling down or isolated. But if not, or if that's something that you're still working on, there's always the internet. There's always gonna be a community on the internet. That's me, I'm, I'm right here. There's also just the very tough but good suggestion, and I'm saying that it's good because I have taken it despite it being difficult for me, is just getting out there and trying to meet people, interact with people, even if it feels hard, even if it feels easier to shut down and lay in bed for hours or just withdraw, even if it's something as simple as going to the bookstore and looking for a book, or, you know, if you work from home like I do, working from a coffee shop or the library, like that's something I've gotten into the habit of, which has made a huge difference for me in the rare occasion that I actually can do it. Calling an old friend, like go on, go on a Discord, like whatever works for you to like, like stay connected where you don't have to be so aware of the loneliness that kind of is inherent to navigating dating and the kind of feelings of projection and just like disillusionment that come with dating as somebody with ADHD. Wherever you feel like you can belong, go there with whoever makes you feel like you belong, be with them. For me, the non-romantic relationships in my life, even like professionally, like those, those relationships help as well. They bolster the part of me that is maybe like seeking a more romantic thing or like yearning for that or wanting that, but is feeling disappointed by the experiences of dating in general for one of a billion reasons. It makes me feel supported and safe. Ultimately, I think helps me be a better partner to the eventual person I will be with despite my ADHD. HD, but also like a better partner to myself. Like, take in all that love that people are giving you. And if like you just need some right now, I'm giving you some. Take it you up. It's for you. Community and connection is super important to have, especially when you are navigating dating as somebody with ADHD. Don't take those things for granted. Start slowly working on building those aspects of your life out. If right now you feel like it's lacking, this has been something that I've been doing for quite some time. And I will say right now, it's not easy. It's, it's tough, but it's 100% worth it. It helps to have people to just be able to remind you when like you can even remind yourself that yeah, you might be like looking for love and that's great and dandy, but you're also building a life that is filled with meaningful interactions out outside of that goal. That is the video. To wrap it up, we basically tackled three main challenges that um, people with ADHD who are in the dating scene, the swing pendulum of hyper-focused disinterest, whether that is in a particular person towards the whole sentiment of dating in general, seeking, understanding partners, and throwing out the red flags as soon as you see them. And then of course, navigating the painful pains of, of, of loneliness that I think a lot of ADHD people already struggle with and therefore can struggle with even more when they're out there trying to find somebody in the dating scene. Each one like comes with its hurdles. 
obviously all been ones that I've been struggling with for literal years, but they also come with solutions. You know, open communication, it's setting high standards for respect for yourself. And of course, importantly, building a supportive community, whether that be with friends, like platonic relationships, professional relationships, or just like people in your community, man, or people online. In person is probably the best, but online is good too. If you face these challenges or a variation on the theme, something similar to them, I would love to hear about it. If it's not too painful to talk about in the comments below, I'd also love to know what other topics you guys might find to be helpful. Right now, I feel really energized by the idea of ADHD and dating and relationships. Right now, that's kind of my bread and butter. So I would like to keep making videos that are in that categorical topic combination. Was that a sentence? It was. If you have any questions or suggestions about topics that are related to those two, two things, or even if they're not, I'm totally open to that as well. Let me know because I will get back into it. Moving forward, I would like to get back into the habit of making sure that I have anecdotal support, obviously, but also quantitative, qualitative, you know, like studies. And read a really, really enlightening book about ADHD recently. Did I finish it? I didn't finish it. <laughs> I did not finish it, but I love it. It is G G Gabor. G is that how we say his name? Gabor Mate? Mate? And uh, whatever. I'm Uncultured Swine. Y'all can Google it. It's called Scattered Mind. It's a little bit dated. I will say that because it was written, I think, over 10 years ago. I still do feel like it is a wealth, wealth, wealth of information. And it opened my eyes to a lot of things I didn't know about ADHD. The best part of it, I would say, is that it is written by somebody with ADHD and somebody who is a doctor. And I'm not saying, oh, like we're just gonna give him props because he's a doctor, because I don't really trust doctors most of the time, but he happens to be in that like sweet spot of lived experience and clinical expertise, which is pretty amazing. So yeah, that's a great book. That's not what this video is about, but I will add the link to that book in, in the, I don't even know what what, it, what it's called. I don't even know what the fucking thing. I'll link it in the caption, in the description of this video, I'll, I'll give you guys a link to the book in the description of the video. I've also been thinking a lot about maybe like doing a full on video, just so like reviewing that book and other books that relate to ADHD. And if you've read that, I'd also love to hear what you think about it. And I've also linked all the other of my favorite ADHD tools that have just been little lifesavers for me along the way in my existence as somebody in the world with ADHD. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this helpful, please let me know. It really does give me a little, a little love in my heart. Give it a thumbs up. Definitely subscribe. It's been real. It's been fun. It's been real fun. It, it has. It has. I'll see you next time.